Bobby Hillen was 22. Man, I had to be in there somewhere when I was my first one. <laughs> they don't remember back that yeah. far. <laughs> <laughs> okay. White flag. White flag. One to go. Coming around the Daytona 500 winner, Sterling Marlin. Looking up Jimmy Spencer just in front of him. Boy, this is a moment. Out on loan. Set on the pole at 181.439. He will become only the fifth driver in 35 years to win the Coca-Cola 600 at Charlotte, North Carolina from the pole. Checkers are out, and they are down, and it is Jeff Gordon victorious this evening on this Memorial Weekend at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. Yeah, call it another one. <laughs> <laughs> Schedule distance, 500 laps. This will be a regular attempt at the restart, not a green-white checker. Well, Jamie with a good run off turn two. That's as good as you could hope for. Side by side for the lead as they go into three. McMurray a little higher through three and four. The Clear advantage to the right 24. Here. White flag in the air one more time around for Gordon. Jeff Gordon looking for a storybook in there to the 2015 season. Out of three and four. This win's going to punch his ticket to the championship four. Gordon wins at Martinsville. That's how you do it. That was huge. That was huge. God, I love you guys. Great job. Way to hang in there. That's what I'm talking about. Fight and dig it, boys. That's what we do. It's win number 93 on his career, and more importantly, he moves into a position where he could get his fifth championship. Sunoco continues to fuel victories. And Tony Stewart gets the white. One more lap to go. Stewart has a lot of traffic ahead of him, but I don't think it's going to be a factor in the race. They come down the back stretch. Bobby Labonte is still about five or six car lengths behind him. Here comes Tony Stewart off the corner. And in his 25th NASCAR Winston Cup race, Tony Stewart wins at Richmond International Raceway. Becomes the first rookie in Winston Cup racing to win since Davey Allison at Dover. Uh-oh. Oh, he's wheel hopping. He's going to hit him. is there. He hit him. Hey, oh, got my. him. Oh, oh no. 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 It's not over. Get him back. Denny got in there and wheel hopped. I don't think he meant for that to happen, but then he made contact with Tony. I think Tony was also pretty loose getting in there. Well, that, that was what happened to Tony that before, you know, when he got loose into seven and that allowed Hamlin to close up. Hey, this thing's not over, guys. Watch oh. what happens into turn 11 in this heavy braking zone. Two more corners. Hamlin trying to pull Tony's away. Close yeah. enough. I think Tony used up his stuff. I mean, we knew he was having, you know, issues Here we go. Uh, uh, uh. Stewart yes. inside. Oh, he Hamlin is there. there. He Wait, gets whoa. Hamlin. They whoa. hit. And Stewart comes off turn 11. Look at that. He's coming to the flag. How did that Tony Stewart How did that happen? Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right, man. How does that feel, buddy? Still a champion, buddy. Two of the youngest drivers in the field. Rookie and a sophomore fighting for the win. Final lap. And look lined up behind them. 28, 9, 6, 88, 40. All the over 40 the veterans. Yes. Jimmy Johnson in his 13th start, going for his first career win and trying to become the ninth different driver to win a Winston Cup race for Rick Hendrick. That thing doesn't quit running on him. He's got it made. <laughs> we'll watch Kurt Busch drive off in this end before. Picks up about three car lengths. Jimmy Johnson eases back to that problem. Jimmy Johnson off turn four, sixth in points, leading rookie on the tour, and he's going to win his 13th start. Here before a hometown crowd appeals. What a race. Look at that. Look at this. You the man. You the man. No, you the man. No, you the man. <laughs> no, 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 you the man. 
remember, this is the car that Jeff Gordon won at Michigan and Indy with last year. You're going to be the man, you got to beat the man, and he did. He did not get the start that he wanted. He's going to have to work hard to get the outside of Jimmy Johnson here. Oh, McMurray three wide. Wow, he's sideways. Oh, oh no, no, no. The crash. Crash. Ben Ben's got away. crashed. Be Big wreck going into three. I mean, look at him. A wreck everywhere. I think they made it to the overtime line. Now NASCAR will have to look at video to determine whether the leader was at the overtime line or not before the cautious. We'll get a total of the cars involved for you. Ty Dillon was able to come across. And Jimmy Johnson will tie Cale Yarborough. On stock car racing's all-time win list, Johnson wins his 11 at Dover. He's got a lot of fans here in Dover because <laughs> they're all cheering for that. I don't know that anybody saw that coming. I don't think they thought he was going to pull it off today, but he did. I really felt like things were going his way when he stayed out on that one one time there and the caution, you know, got a lot of cars to lap down. And worked out. A white flag, last lap for Dale Earnhardt Jr. Wow, don't you know his heart's beating harder than that car is running right now. His grandfather, Ralph, former national champion, they called him Ironheart because he gave nothing on the racetrack. His father, seven-time Winston Cup champion, once dubbed Iron Head, and then the Intimidator. He and can, how about this kid? He can coast on now, Mike. Checkered flag, Dale Earnhardt Jr. is Texas Motor Speedway's second First time Winston Cup winner. After yellow flag pit stops, Dale Jr. would be the leader with Kevin Harvick restarting second. With 100 laps to go, the sprinkles that plagued the start of the race early returned and were quickly followed by a heavy downpour. And that was enough for NASCAR to red flag the race and Dale Jr. would be declared the winner. Here they go, white flag boys, last time, he's there. He cut the margin in less than half. Hey, boys, watch this. Jimmy goes up high to block him. That may or may not be good. He can get that run right here if he can get it. Keep that momentum. He's going to get a run at him. He'll get one shot at turn three and four. I'm telling you, they're going to be side by side when they come to the line. It's going to be another one of those fantastic Atlanta finishes. Johnson tries to block him. It's who can stay in the throttle here off turn four. And here they come, and I think Cole's got the advantage on him. Right there, that is the man. And look at the celebration. It has just been declared official. Carl Edwards wins at Texas. I, I want to know, is he going to climb back on the car to do a backflip? Awesome. Probably changed inside the, inside the helmet for Dale Earnhardt. Because now all of a sudden he's in the lead and, and he's competitive and he's he's the guy to beat now. And so he actually had to outrun Bobby Allison and Daryl Waltrip that day to take the win. Outran Waltrip and then Waltrip got passed late in the day. Allison got second with maybe five laps to go. But there was no catching that blue and yellow number two. To keep the concentration and to keep the competitiveness and to be in the car for three or four hours like they had to be back then, uh, it was... It, it was he's on the apron of the racetrack, Ned. He saves the race car up almost against Bobby Labonte. Dale Earnhardt Sr. has come from 17th spot in four laps to lead it on the final lap. So Kenny Wallace is in second spot, followed by his teammate, Joe Nemechek. Nemechek was the pole center, and Kenny Wallace has likewise never won a Winston Cup race. Three Chevrolets on the final lap at Talladega. 2.7 million and a million dollar bonus for Dale Earnhardt if he can hang on. The no ball five contender, Mr. Restricted Race, Dale Earnhardt comes down and will take his 10th career victory at Talladega in the Winston Five. Rick, the Craig has a table. It was wild. I didn't. I didn't have any 
any thought that I'd have a chance at winning this race starting where I did on that restart. Boys, as we kept working away and got on the outside, Kenny, Kenny Wallace really worked hard with us and uh, he done a good job. Uh, I don't think we better got back up there if it wasn't for Kenny. How he, did you get back up there? He stayed with me. Uh, once we got together, he stayed with me and we, he pushed me to the outside of them guys and I had to beat Mike Skinner, but I had to beat him for a million. We might add another new winner tonight as Matt Kenseth takes the white flag. The final lap of the Coca-Cola 600 in search of his first Winston Cup win. Smooth right down to the bottom of the racetrack, exactly where he ran the lap before. Making Bobby Labonte is making a run at him, though, on his last lap. All Matt has to do now, though, is not make a mistake. Final set of quarters. Here he comes. Winston Cup win, number one in the Coca-Cola 600 for Wisconsin's Matt Kenseth. What a race to have your first win at. We talked about on the final pit stops, track position being so important that Kenseth's team got him track position. Got him up there, just behind Bobby Labonte. They both quickly passed Jeff Gordon, who got two tires, then Kenseth dispensed with Labonte, led the rest of the way to score the victory, his first in the NASCAR Winston Cup Series. Kenseth eliminated from the playoffs on a technicality, had too many men over the wall when they were trying to fix the car. Now, trying to get that win in 2017. The 45-year-old comes out of turn number four. Kins is gonna win at Phoenix. <laughs> Look at that joy from Matt Kinseth grabbing that win, Matt. How, how did you do that, brother? I don't know what to say except for uh, thank the Lord. Uh, it's, been a, it's been an amazing journey. Um, I know I'm a big baby right now, but uh, just got one race left. Um, everybody dreams of going out a winner. So, uh, you know, we won today. Nobody can take that one away from us. It's a heck of a race with Chase there. Uh, golly, just thanks. Uh, DeWalt, Circle K, Toyota, all our, uh, all our sponsors, and uh, JGR for a great five years. It's been uh, quite the journey here the last 20. And thank you, fans. I appreciate it.